Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna look at CICD pipelines and in particular, how we can create them for free using GitHub Actions. CICD is not something I've covered much on this channel yet. So I'm gonna quickly explain what it is and why we use it. So CI stands for continuous integration and it's the process of automatically running all of your unit tests and integration tests for each of your builds. Now you don't have to have your unit tests and integration tests running on every single commit. It can just be whenever you create a pull request, your tests run automatically. And at least this way, if the tests fail, you can stop that code being merged into develop or master. You should of course be running at least your unit tests on your machine before you raise your pull request. But having tests running automatically on the server is a good quality control to have in place. And it also prevents the scenario where the tests are only running on your machine and not anyone else's. In the past, I've used tools such as TeamCity and Jenkins to run my CI pipelines, but more and more teams are moving to GitHub Actions. If your code's already on GitHub, then it's a bit of a no-brainer to run your tests on there as well. And it will also save money on licensing and server costs. Now, CD can stand for either continuous delivery or continuous deployment. They're both quite similar, but there are subtle differences. Continuous delivery is really about building and packaging up your application ready for it to be deployed on the server, but it doesn't actually include the deployment of your application. Continuous deployment, on the other hand, also covers the deployment of your application to your target environment. Most companies don't like having applications going straight to production without any manual intervention. It's quite typical to have continuous deployment when going to say the dev and QA environments, but when it comes to production, generally you want some manual controls in place. In the past, I've always used Octopus Deploy to be able to gatekeep those deployments to different environments, but it's actually possible to do that in GitHub Actions as well. So to be able to test out the functionality of GitHub Actions, I've created a very simple .NET Core API that writes to a MySQL database. This project includes unit and integration tests, and we're gonna have GitHub Actions run those as well as show off the results in a nice format. For the continuous delivery part of this project, I'm gonna have GitHub Actions build out a Docker image and have it push it to AWS ECR for me. I'm not going to cover how to do any of those manual approval workflows as I'm going to cover that in a future video. All the code that you're going to see in this video is available to my paid newsletter subscribers. My newsletter is otherwise free at the moment, but if you want to support my channel, then that's the best way to do it. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. So the .NET Core API that I've put together for this project is a very simple library application. So think something similar to Goodreads. So this application is really made up of three layers. We have our API layer, which has all the controllers, all the endpoints and handles things like validation. We then have the service layer that handles all of the business logic. And then we have our persistence layer, which is saving everything to the database. I also have an SDK which I've written using a great .NET Core package called Refit. And this is what I'm then using in my integration test to be able to call my API. So I've got some endpoints for adding authors to the database as well as getting them either singularly or as a paged result. I then have another controller that lets you add books as well as retrieve them in a similar way. On the test side of things, I've obviously got unit tests. I haven't done a complete set, but there's unit tests for both the controllers as well as some for the service layer. And then for the integration tests, I've got some tests that show that you can create an author and retrieve it, as well as creating a book and retrieve it. And these integration tests aren't using any of the API code, they're just relying on the SDK. So in order to be able to run the integration tests in GitHub Actions, we need to have the API running as well as the database. And the way we do this is with Docker. So because I've built my application with .NET Core, I've put together a multi-stage Docker file to be able to build and run my application. Now there's probably other ways depending on what you're using to be able to run your application in GitHub Actions. But I'd recommend if you're gonna be deploying your application using Docker anyway, that you use that Docker image for testing your application. So there's a few things that make up a .NET Core Docker file. We have first, we're gonna use the SDK image from Microsoft. So this is what we're gonna to use to build our application. We're then gonna copy across all of our project files. And this is so that we can run .NET Restore against them. Now, the reason that we separate this instead of just copying across everything is because .NET Restore is quite a lengthy process. You've got to download all the NuGet packages and by separating it out, we can basically benefit from the cache layers that we have in Docker. So provided you don't change any of these project files by adding in any additional dependencies, it means that when you run .NET Restore, it should cache that layer and not need to run it again, even if you change the other files in your application. Once .NET Restore is done, we then copy across all the other files and then run .NET Publish in release mode to be able to build our application. Now, of course, we don't wanna keep any of these source files as part of our Docker image because it's gonna make our Docker image quite large. We're then gonna get the .NET Runtime image and we're gonna copy across all of the files that we've just built in the other container. 
And you can see here I'm exposing port 5275, which we're then going to use later on to call our API. So as I mentioned earlier, to be able to run the integration test, we also need a database running in the back end. So I'm using MySQL for this, and I'm just using the standard MySQL image. So you can see here in my Docker Compose file, I have a database service set up using MySQL 8, and I have some very basic and not very secure passwords set up here just for use for testing. And then I have our API set up and you can see here we've got build dot because the Docker file is in the same folder. And then we're tagging this image with GitHub Actions demo dot API and then version. And I'll cover where that version is coming from in a bit. So you can see here, I've got the port set to 5275, but I'm then mapping that to 5200 in the Docker Compose file. And this is so you can run the Docker Compose file with the database and not worry about any port clashes when you run the API locally on your machine. So if we run Docker Compose up, we can see that this is going to spin up our MySQL database as well as our API as well. We can then use something like Postman to be able to call our API and make sure that everything works. For the paid subscribers that have access to this project, I've also included this Postman collection as part of it, so you can easily test out the API. So that's how this API works. Next, we're going to have a look at the GitHub Actions file and see how we can put everything together so we can run our tests in GitHub. So GitHub Actions does have a very generous free tier. You can run the standard Linux runners for free if you've got a public repository. For private repositories, you have around 2000 minutes a month that you can use for free. This is only for the Linux runners. If you opt for the Windows runners, then you're gonna use twice as many minutes. And if you opt for the Mac OS runners, then you're gonna use 10 times the amount. So you're gonna see the amount of free minutes you have go down pretty quickly. So for this example, I can use Linux as .NET Core is cross-platform, but obviously it depends on what you're using. So the first thing we need to set up is a name. So I've just called this build, test, and push. We then specify when we want this to run. So just for this example, I'm doing on push. So every time I push something to my repository, it's going to run this test. But you could set it up to just do it on pull request or on merge, for example. And you can even specify particular branches that you want it to run on. Now we need to set up our jobs. For this example, I'm just setting up one job called build. So you can create multiple jobs in GitHub Actions, but it gets a bit complicated. You can't just use variables and data that you've had in one job to be used into the next job. You have to use the artifacts and upload them and download them between each of the jobs. Again, I'll probably cover this in a future video, but for now it's easier just to keep everything in one job. Next, we specify where our job runs. So in this case, I'm just using Ubuntu Latest. Again, this is the cheapest option if you're using GitHub Actions. So first we need to check out our code. Now GitHub obviously comes with a standard action to be able to do this, uh, which is just action slash checkout. Now as part of this setup, I want to get the semantic version of my application to be able to tag my Docker image. And to do that, I'm using Git version. But I found out with a bit of trial and error that Git version doesn't actually work unless you go and grab the tags using Git fetch. So I've got this line to be able to fetch an unshallow copy of my code. I can then install Git version and then run Git version execute to be able to get the semantic version of my code. Next, we're going to set up .NET as I'm using .NET. And here we specify the version, so I'm using .NET 7. We then need to run the same commands that we would do if we were building our application on our machine. So in this case, we run .NET restore to build our dependencies and .NET build to build our project. So now we've got our .NET code built on the GitHub runner. So next, I'm going to run my unit tests. So I'm running .NET test and I've got a filter here with a category equals unit. Now I can do this because I'm using X unit and I've set up a trait to specify the category. So when I run my unit tests, this is gonna produce a test results file. And this is because I've got this VS test logger set up in my project. Now I've set this up so that it will put all the test results into a test results folder inside the test project. And then later I'm gonna use the test reporter to be able to show these test results in GitHub. So I have to create a test results folder in my root project and copy across the test results. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because when I come to run my integration tests, it's gonna overwrite the unit test results. For some reason, when you use a filter, it skips over the tests, but it still produces a test result file, which is a bit annoying. So now that we've run all our unit tests, we can now run our integration tests. Now, to be able to do this, we need to spin up a Docker container and we can do that using our Docker Compose file. Now you can see here, I'm running Docker Compose up. I'm also specifying that we should always build our project and I've got the minus D so that it runs in the background. Now you can see here, I'm specifying a version environment variable, which we saw earlier in our Docker Compose file. And this is gonna get the NuGet version, which we found earlier using Git version. And this is gonna make sure that when we build our application in Docker Compose, it's gonna tag that image with the correct version. Now in the next step, we're just gonna sleep for 30 seconds. There's probably a better way to do this. You could call the API to see whether it is up and running. 
but this was just the simplest way to do it. Now, the reason we have to do this, because if we jump on to running our integration test straight away, then the Docker containers might not be up yet and it will just fail. Now for our integration tests, we're just running .NET test again, because they're just X unit tests. And this time we're filtering by category integration. And here I'm specifying the base URL in an environment variable so that it knows to call the API that's running in the Docker Compose. And again, once that's run, we're gonna copy across the integration test results into our test results folder. Next, I'm using this test reporter action from the GitHub Actions Marketplace. This gives you a nice view of all of the tests from your application and whether they've passed, failed, or been skipped and how long each of them took to run. Now, the best thing about this test reporter GitHub Action is it also works with lots of different languages. It works obviously with .NET, we've got XUnit, NUnit, and MS Test, but it also works with Dart, Flutter, Java, and JavaScript. So if you're using any of those, you can get a nice report from your test results. And you can see here, we've got if, success, or failure, which basically just means this is always gonna run regardless of whether the integration tests passed or failed. Now for the continuous delivery part of this workflow, I'm gonna push the Docker image that we previously created up to AWS ECR. Now I've already got ahead and created an AWS ECR repository and I've created a user which has got an access key and a secret key. Now to make sure that these keys can't be seen, I'm using the GitHub secrets that stores them encrypted in your repository. And then you can just reference them here so that they don't appear when you build. Now I've created another if statement here, which means that this step is only gonna run if you're running it on the main branch. If I run it on develop or on a pull request branch, it's not going to push anything up to AWS ECR. If we run all this on GitHub Actions, you can see it all goes through and passes. We've then got a nice test report that shows our unit tests on our integration test results. And finally, if we look on AWS, you can see here that the image is uploaded successfully. Now, if you wanna try any of this out with the complete project, if you become a paid subscriber of my newsletter, you'll get complete access to the code as well as the code to all of my future videos. And I'm also planning on releasing a few courses in the future and there's gonna be some generous discounts for all of my paid subscribers. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.